planet get you. There are many people who bully today, and they do it in such a horrible way. I saw a sixth grader bully a second grade child, laughing at his brown hair and old fashioned style. Sometimes there are people in my class who bully me. They make jokes and call me poor because of my lunch money. They get five, but my mom gives me two. They call her the old woman who lives in the shoe. They laugh at my pants, say I hitch up like Bob, but I laugh it off because my joy they can't rock. But I see some people who are not strong like me being bullied and teased. They should not be. They're sad and they cry and they never want to play. But if I could just have one wish, I would stamp out bullying today. Okay, so this video serves as a really, really good introduction as to what it is that we're going to be talking about today. And today we're going to be focusing on elements of a poem. So that is a poem that we just watched and it was written by uh, my nephew who is now in seventh grade. I think he wrote it when he was in seven, when he was in second grade. Yeah, because that was about five years ago. So let's go ahead now and look at what a poem actually is. A poem is a written or a creative piece. And there is a certain format that a poem follows. Unlike essays, a poem does not have paragraphs and it might not have complete sentences. So that is, is how we distinguish a poem from something that we normally read like books and, and essays that we normally write. Here is what a poem does have. One, it, it consists of lines or rows of words that may or may not form sentences. And we'll look at that when we get to um, the word form of the poem that we just watched. And it has stanzas. And the stanza is a group of lines separated by a space. So let's take a look at the poem in its written form. We've already talked about lines. So we have So we have our lines. And notice how the first line it doesn't have a punctuation mark but the second line does. You'll find those students that sometimes they might not put a punctuation mark at the end of the lines. It's just that this particular author did that. So we look, we're looking at it as how it was written. So we have our lines. And we already said that a stanza is a group of lines separated by a line. So our first stanza consists of four lines and it ends at style. Our second stanza also consists of four lines and it ends at shoe. Our third stanza consists of four lines and it ends at B, our last stanza now, it only has two lines and it ends at today. So in total, our poem has four stanzas, four stanzas in total. And how many lines does it have? It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 14 lines. So if you're asked how many lines does Don't Let It Get You consist of, it consists of 14 lines. If you're asked how many stanzas it consists of, it consists of 14 stanzas, okay? Now in poetry, you know like how in, in essays, we normally have a narrator. Okay, so in poetry, we normally have a speaker and the speaker is the voice behind the poem. So let's look at, the poem that we just watched. And I'll highlight some key points. It says, I saw a sixth grader bully a second grade child. Sometimes there are people in my class who bully me. They laugh at my pants, I hitch up like Bob. Okay. So here are some 
statements from the poem. What can we assume about the person or the speaker of the poem? We can assume that the speaker is a victim. How can we assume that? Because we said, sometimes there are people in my class who bully me. They laugh at my pants, they hitch up like ball, and they also laugh at his lunch money. So he's one, a victim, or he is a person that is bullied. So when you're asked, who is the speaker of a particular poem or a particular piece of writing that you're analyzing, you want to look at what is being said so you can make a determination. Remember when we looked at making inferences and we said that an inference is when we make an assumption based on the facts. When you're looking at the poem, I want you to determine the speaker based on what is presented to you. So we already have that they are laughing at his clothing, laughing at his lunch money, and he, he the person has already indicated that they bully him. So we're going to assume that the speaker is a victim or a person that is being bullied. Diction. Diction students is the choice of words by an author or a poet. Diction is very important. What do the words do or what kind of effect do they have when we read them in not only our sentences or in our essays, but how do they affect the overall poem? So here are some things that I highlighted. Uh, old fashioned style. Say so I hitch up like Bob. So this here is, is making a, this is kind of like a, a humorous statement. Say so I hitch up like Bob. And then old fashioned style, this gives us a, a visual as to how the child could possibly be dressed. Maybe they're, they're wearing uh, an old plaid style or an old pattern that is not no longer um, used in this day and age as a part of fashion. So they say old fashioned style. So how does this impact what we interpret as we read the poem? There's something that you should also look at. Um, even when they say, or when the, the, the speaker says, old woman who lives in a shoe, what Im impact does, does, does that have on the poem itself? Who are not strong like me, being bullied and teased. Every word in this poem was carefully selected to have an impact or to have some kind of effect or to have some kind of effect in the overall message of the poem. So when you're analyzing your poem, students, or even when you're writing your own, it's very important that you pay close attention to the words that are used. Rhyme. Rhyme is another element of the poem. And this is very, very, very important. And it takes some kind of skill. Rhyme is when the words at the end of each line or some of the lines rhyme, they sound the same. So let's go back now to our poem. Notice how the words at the end rhyme, day, way, child, style, me, money. Now, sometimes students, the rhymes are what we call, we call them sight rhymes. You're able to look at the endings or the words and say, okay, these rhyme. For example, Bob and Rob and me and B. But some words, when pronounced and we emphasize the sound at the very end, we say, oh, these are sound rhymes. You have, you have to pronounce it to hear the rhyming. So me and mon money. So it's the E at the end of both words that makes it rhyme. And child and style, although when you look at them, you might say, okay, 
these don't necessarily rhyme because they don't have the same spelling at the end, but they rhyme they, when we sound them out. Okay, so that's very important to note. So how do we determine rhyme scheme? We've already identified how we can look at the words to determine that they rhyme. How can we now determine the rhyme scheme? Now, when you're determining the rhyme scheme of the poem, it's very important that you do it stanza by stanza. So now we have four stanzas here. And with the rhyme scheme, students, you use the alphabet and you always start at A. You always start at A for each stanza. So for the first line, our, it's A. The second line is still A because they rhyme, they both rhyme. For the third line, it's B because child, way, and they don't rhyme, all right? And for the last one is B, child and style rhyme, so it will remain the same. Now, had we had me instead of style, we would have put C because it doesn't rhyme. So whenever you're doing rhyme scheme, you start at the first line, and start with the first letter of the alphabet. Now, if the word that comes next does not rhyme with the first word, then you move to the second letter of the alphabet. If it rhymes, then you put A. You continue with A. If when you move now to your third line, it doesn't rhyme with A or doesn't rhyme with B, you have to put the next letter of the alphabet. So that is how we do rhyme scheme. Now, let's just say you're asked to give the rhyme scheme for the entire poem. We just did stanza one. So the rhyme scheme for stanza one is A, A, B, B. But we're asked now to give the rhyme scheme for the entire poem. So the rhyme scheme for the entire poem, students, we'll have to go down the line. All right, we've already done the first one is A, A, B, B. And of course, you're going to start at A again. So it'll be Because remember, you're doing stanza by stanza for the rhyme scheme. So this is what the rhyme scheme would be. A, A, B, B, A, A, B, B, A, A, B, B, A, A. All right? Now, had all of this been one stanza, then your rhyme scheme would be totally different. But in most cases, you'd normally just be asked to, do, to give the rhyme scheme for one stanza, okay? So tone now is the poet or the, the speaker's attitude toward the subject of the poem. So when we look at the poem, don't let it get you. What is the author's attitude towards bullying? Bearing in mind that when you talk about a particular tone, you have to be able to justify it with facts or, or from an example in the poem. Now I have their brave and confident for tone. So how did I arrive to that? The line that says, but I see some people who are not strong like me. He is confident in who he is as a person. So it, it doesn't affect him. And even look at the line that says, but I laugh it off because my joy, they can't go off. The, the tone there is brave or confident. Theme now. Theme is the central message of a piece of writing. 
And normally we look at what the source says to determine what the theme is. So we already know that it's about bullying. Who bully me? They call her old woman, being bullied and teased, scrambled bullying today, sixth grader bully, a second grade child. So the theme for this particular poem is bullying. Always look for what is being discussed throughout to determine what the theme is. So when we read the skin I'm in text, we see that bullying comes up as well. So bullying is not only a, a theme that can be brought out in, in prose text, but it can also be discussed in poems as well. And we've seen that beautifully done within this poem here. Now these, this is the last part that we're going to talk about for poems. And it is the figurative language. And we know that whenever a word is used outside of its dictionary, meaning that word is used figuratively. And we've discussed some of the figurative devices already, metaphors, similes, hyperbole, onomatopoeia, alliterations. And we'll also look at some other ones like idioms and imagery. But it's very important, irony, but it's very important students that when you're, you're analyzing your poems, you know what it is that you're looking for. So you need to have a strong understanding of what a metaphor is if you're going to be able to identify it. You need to have a strong understanding of what um, alliteration is. So when you're analyzing your poems, you know what it is that you're looking for. Now this poem doesn't use a lot of figurative devices, so we won't necessarily discuss figurative devices for this particular poem. So thank you, and I hope that you found this information useful.